Hey everybody, Fab tuning in to today's video where we're going to have a look at the global computer models and we're going to see what they are predicting for the autumn of 2012 in the British Isles uh, during this video. We're going to attempt to uh, do that in any case. Now before we get on with the video, I just want to talk about the advertising. There will usually be a video ad overlaying my web videos at gasweathervids.com. Please play those videos because you'll be supporting GavsWeatherVids.com if you do that. The other thing I want to mention is all the charts I'm using uh, for this video. I'll talk you through them as we go uh, step by step through the video. Every chart that you see in uh, this video is on my links page. Just click on the links tab at the bottom of this page. Go through to the links page and you'll see every single uh, website where these charts have come from. And you can see all the charts for yourself. So the first thing we're going to look at is be probability maps from the uh, Met Office and probability is quite difficult to talk about but basically uh, this is the uh, probability of a given outcome so what we're looking at here is the probability uh, through September, October, November of above normal temperatures in the British Isles. Um, well, it's for the globe, actually, but for the British Isles is what we're fo focusing on uh, specifically. And we can see about the probability, we can model things, but the probability of above average temperatures in the British Isles uh, through this autumn is going to be 20% to the north of the country and uh, up to... Um, Let's have a quick scroll down here so we can see this. And up to 40 to 60% here for uh, England and Wales. So we've got a 40% to 60% chance of above normal temperatures across England and Wales this autumn. Uh, a lower uh, probability uh, for Scotland. If we have a look at uh, the uh, near normal temperature probability, the probability is 20 to 40 percent really across the bulk of the country. Uh, so we've got a greater chance of above normal temperatures uh, than normal temperatures this autumn. And if we have a look at the probability for uh, below normal temperatures, well we can see we've got uh, a uh, probability of 60 to 80 percent here uh, below normal temperatures to the north of the country but uh, for the bulk of the country itself the probability of below normal temperatures is 20 to 40 percent so the model is favoring above normal temperatures uh, this autumn and that's seen a bit of a change to uh, last month now next thing we'll look at is the uh, precipitation probability and again it's a similar idea um, the model is predicting a 20% uh, probability of above normal precipitation uh, this autumn uh, the model is predicting a 20 to 40% probability of uh, a near normal precipitation across the British Isles this autumn that's the white area there and then for below normal below normal precipitation uh, the probability is 40 to 60 percent so there's a greater probability that the uh, autumn is going to be dry and warm uh, than it is than it is going to be uh, wet and cool but uh, obviously this isn't all that helpful to you and uh, this is all the Met Office does now um, in terms of seasonal forecasting because uh, after the barbecue summer and uh, the very cold winter of 2009 and 2010 uh, the Met Office has stopped doing uh, proper seasonal forecasts so this is the best we get from the Met Office really but it isn't all helpful. Now if we go on to the other models and the next model we're going to look at is the Jamstech IOD model and this is the uh, this is much more straightforward this is just simple temperature forecast through uh, the autumn September October November and we can see that the temperature forecast here is well pretty much near normal across the British Isles actually perhaps favoring ever so slightly above normal there's very light pink colors there but really this is a, uh, a forecast for uh, near normal temperatures here across the British Isles but notice that the bulk of Europe is actually having um, below normal uh, temperatures this autumn uh, if the model is right but it's forecasting below normal temperatures really for the bulk of the, the continent and our temperatures are just uh, normal so uh, that's quite a cool signal really for much of northern and western Europe uh, this autumn now the precipitation uh, uh, forecast through uh, this autumn well we've got above average rainfall being forecast here above average precipitation across the British Isles and that's true uh, for much of central Europe as well maybe slightly below average precipitation to the south but uh, what I really want you to focus on is this big area of below normal precipitation to the north of the country um, around Iceland and to the north of Iceland uh, this probably is indicating quite an extensive
massive area of high pressure developing to the north of the country with these uh, above average precipitation to the south of that that would I think be implying um, the jet stream is taking a more southerly track and if you combine that with the uh, uh, forecast for below average temperatures for much of uh, Western Europe although not for the British Isles but if you combine these two things the below average temperatures for Western Europe and this uh, above average precipitation across the bulk of Central Europe um, with the above uh, uh, with the below average precipitation to the north, I think this is implying that the jet stream is going to be taking a more southerly track uh, through the autumn. Um, that could be quite a cool wet signal, really, uh, for many parts of Europe and for the British Isles this autumn. So I think the Jamstech model, IOD, Jamstech IOD model, is actually going for quite a cool wet autumn uh, once you uh, filter everything out. Next thing we want to look at is the Beijing Climate Centre, and uh, this is going uh, for well above average heights. These are 500 millibar heights. Um, you know all about these. I use these for my everyday videos. This is going for above average heights here uh, to the east of the country and below average heights to the west. Now um, this is probably quite a wet signal again uh, coming in uh, from the Atlantic. Those above average heights are generally to the east of the country. I think this uh, extensive trough here in the Atlantic will quite probably be giving us uh, quite a wet autumn if this is right. The temperature forecast is going, it's going for a warmer than average autumn here across uh, many parts of the British Isles. This is British Isles here. Charles here. It is going for a warmer than average autumn. That's probably because we've got high pressure to the east and low pressure to the west. So winds probably tending to be more from the south uh, than any other direction. But uh, for rainfall, it is going for above average rainfall here. A wet autumn is being forecast around British Charles and out to the west of the country as well. That's hardly surprising because that's quite a big trough um, that it's going for. I'll have a look at it again. There it is. That's quite a big trough there being forecast uh, to the west in the Atlantic. Um, so yes, I think this is going, the Beijing Climate Centre is going for a wet autumn and uh, probably quite a warm autumn as well. Next thing we want to look at is the probability maps from the Russian model. And this is the British Isles here. This is the temperature anomaly forecast for August, September, October. So not quite for the whole of the autumn, but uh, this is uh, pretty much the bulk of the autumn really uh, coming into this um, uh, forecast period. Now what the model here is going for, it's going for um, a uh, above average uh, probability to the north of the country, well above average to the north of the country, um, and a probability of near normal or below normal to the south, near normal to the southwest, below normal uh, to the south across uh, much of France and the bulk of the continent. So having a look at the uh, precipitation forecast again, uh, this is quite interesting again it's going for below normal precipitation here I hope you can see this is blue air here this is below normal probability um, to the north of the country above normal precipitation probability to the south of the country so I think again once you uh, combine this be below normal probability to the north be above normal probability to the south with the temperatures above normal probability uh, to the north average or below um, average probability to the south. Again, I think this is giving a very similar to signal actually, uh, strangely enough, to the Jamstech IOD model. And again, the signal is that we're likely to be seeing uh, blocking high pressure to the north, giving a drier and warmer than average weather to the north, and a suddenly tracking jet stream giving cooler and wetter than average probability to the south. So that the Russian model and the IOD model, Jamstech IOD model, are uh, seen from a very similar hymn sheet really. This is all we, I can show you from the ECMWF model. This is from the Norwegian uh, website, um, the Norwegian Met Institute website. This is all I can show you from the ECMWF. They don't like sharing their information. This again is a temperature forecast um, for uh, set, uh, August, September, October, so not quite the whole of the autumn, but the bulk of the autumn. And um, the signal here is really for the bulk of Northern Europe to be uh, very much near normal temperatures uh, through the August to September period. Certainly no sign of anything particularly above average, but no sign of anything particularly below average. Um, but that's all I can show you from the ECMD because they don't like sharing. 
Now, finally, we're going to look at CFS. You know all about CFS, um, a computer model from America. This is NOAA there, uh, long range computer model. Uh, this is a 700 millibar height anomaly chart from CFS version 2. Remember, CFS version 1, I'm not using it for this video, but it has had a stay of ex execution. It's still uh, going strong, and you can get to it from my links page. But uh, this is CFS version 2, the 700 millibar height anomaly. And again, this is a very similar to what we tend to see from CFS, not much to look at here. But we have got a signal uh, for below average uh, anomalies at 700 millibars to the north and the east of the country. That's probably indicating a trough of low pressure somewhere around uh, northern Scotland uh, through to Scandinavia. For uh, temperature, this is for temperature uh, precipitation for uh, September, October, November, and uh, well, not much to see here at all, really. Uh, very much near normal temperature. Is this, but 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 is this showing that to Europe? and the British Isles and uh, the whole of uh, Northern Europe is going to have uh, near, norms, uh, near, near normal temperatures or is this showing that bottle doesn't have a clue what's going to happen, I'm not sure. But if you have a look at precipitation, that's a little bit more interesting and uh, that's showing that uh, the bulk of uh, Central Europe is seeing um, slightly above average precip precipitation here and again we've got a signal for below average precipitation for much of Norway and around Iceland so again, this could well be uh, coming from the same place as the Jamstech model and the Russian model. Again, this is probably implying some form of high pressure developing to the north through the autumn and a jet stream taking above average average precipitation here through much of central and northern Europe. This is quite quite interesting developments I have to say. Finally I want to have a look at, a look at the winter and you remember in the last video um, I showed you the Jamstech IOD temperature forecast for uh, December, January, February for the winter of 2012-2013 and this was it, this was the temperature forecast for the winter from Jamstech in June and it was very very cold, bitterly bitterly cold signal there across much of Europe and particularly the cold focused around British Isles. Well the signal this month is much less uh, intense and this is the signal for uh, temperature signal for December, January, February uh, for the British Isles uh, um, and we can see and Northern Europe as well we can see that the signal is still going for slightly below average temperatures in the west but slightly above average temperatures in the east and the northeast so that's a bit of a turnaround or quite a big turnaround really um, for the winter and that's not surprising because that forecast uh, was very extreme last month from Jamstech I was expecting it to be moderated has been moderated um, so as I was a bit doubtful about that uh, forecast, temperature forecast for December, January, February last month and I was right to be but nevertheless that's still uh, moves out of the way but it's still signalling uh, quite a cool winter here uh, across much of northern uh, certainly much of western and northwestern Europe I should say so that's the uh, round up of the models for the autumn in any case and uh, I think we have got a bit of a signal uh, developing here if we uh, look through models I think the signal really is for quite a wet autumn I think could well have above average rainfall this autumn. That's good news for the drought, of course. Uh, uh, those water authorities will be uh, hoping for a wet autumn. The signal is for, I think, above average rainfall generally. And those temperatures are quite interesting as well. The temperature, uh, temperatures with a subly tra tracking jet stream could well be on the cool side. So a cool, wet autumn may be favour. Now, I'll be doing this all over again next month. The next month will be the final autumn forecast. It'll be the official autumn forecast as well. So come back for that. But thanks for watching. Bye for now.